the final destination, the great equaliser. Whether prince or pauper, we all end up in the same place, in the ground. We used to think the definition of death was the heart stopping beating, but that was before we could measure brain waves. Now we know it's actually the brain that makes us alive or dead because it's the brain that regulates blood pressure, controls heart rate and sends the hormones which keep all the organs working. But what happens then when the heart is dead, the brain is dead, you are dead? Well, brace yourselves guys because things are going to get a little bit gross. First, the body dries out and the cells shrink, which makes it actually look like your hair and your fingernails keep growing. The body also drops one and a half degrees Fahrenheit per hour. So a body that's 91.9 degrees Fahrenheit, around 33 and a bit degrees centigrade, has been dead for four hours. Then, from a few hours to two or three days later, rigor mortis starts. It begins in the head and moves sequentially down the body as out of control enzymes thin the cell walls and allow calcium to flood in and clench the muscles. From that point, the muscles are never released because the body isn't generating any energy to unhook them. After two to three days, these out of control enzymes, which used to be used to help us digest things, but now aren't being kept in order by our immune system, eventually break down the body's cell walls completely. Nutrient filled liquid flows out, flowing into tiny gaps in the body and causing the skin's layers to separate, bubble and slide off. The bacteria, which used to help us operate when we were alive, are now left unchecked by our immune system. They feast on this cell liquid. They reproduce wildly in what is for them a heavenly environment. So bacteria-rich areas like the lungs, digestive system, mouth and brain break down first. And get this, the digested liquid brain will actually froth out through the mouth and nose within the first two and a half weeks after death now we get to flies. If they have access, flies will lay their eggs at all the entrances of the body. And over the next three weeks, maggots develop, grow and feed. And the life stage of the maggots into flies is also another way of determining a corpse time of death. By three weeks, all this eating and reproduction by bacteria causes the usual production of gases to go through the roof. This bloats the stomach big time, as well as other particularly bacteria-rich areas such as the tongue, which is so swollen it sticks out of the mouth. It also bloats the penis and testes, which can swell to the size of small footballs. Eventually, the stomach tears and your innards will become outards. Now, if your body has been laid on the Earth's surface, it will take just four weeks for you to completely putrefy and be reduced to a puddle of matter and bones. If you're in a coffin, the integrity of your body might hold out until water seeps in, but then you'll also putrefy pretty quickly. Of course, temperature extremes can change the process. In the desert, you might become so dehydrated that the bacteria can't breathe so well. You'd probably maintain your skin, even though the inner cell walls would collapse. I guess you'd become a kind of mummy. In the Arctic, you'd stop just before the rigor mortis stage, as all the reactions, such as enzymes breaking things down and calcium flooding in would be stopped by the liquid in your body freezing. As soon as you're thawed out though, they will all kick in with a vengeance. In fact, that delay in the chemical cascade that follows death is why people rescued from technical death in icy conditions have been known to have been brought back to life. Amazingly, scientists in China have just found a way of making atoms glow to track this decomposition process. So soon we're going to be able to neon tag an atom in a fly's body and watch it time lapse as it decomposes, broken down into the soil as it's reabsorbed by a snowdrop. With a decomposition time of four weeks and a snowdrop growth time of, say, three months, it could take as little as four months for you to become a petal. And when that petal is eaten by an animal, that atom becomes part of the animal's body and the whole process begins again. We feel pain when we are heartbroken, so I found a study that compared the emotional pain to real pain. 